Hello and welcome back to the next episode of Austin FC on Football Manager 2021. Lots of things happening in the world of Austin FC and also Football Manager as a whole because uh, the new game is on the horizon and Sports Interactive have started dropping little videos about the new features. Plenty to look forward to including the Data Hub. However, we are not done in 2021. Things have been happening. Last time you were here, hopefully, if you weren't, go back and check it out. We won 3-0 away at Minnesota United. Jan Grigas sent off in the 75th minute. By that point, we were already 2-0 up at Allianz Field. Ben Feely turned out uh, to, with the, to secure a hat-trick uh, late on in front of just 56 away fans. Still, every single one of them took some great memories away. We just had one last game of the season to play. That was against Vancouver Whitecaps. And, would you know it, we won it. It was a tight 1-0 win away from home for Ty Aleshe, man of the match. But, it was Andre Lima getting on the score sheet. Finally, after 20 hours without a goal, uh, scoring in the 8th minute. What that meant was, Austin FC have won the Supporters' Shield. Completely unexpected. Didn't even think we were in the running, really, considering that we were third, fourth in the Western Conference. But some wins just at the end of the season really have uh, pushed us up into that uh, contention. And we have won some silverware in our very first season in MLS. Pretty easy, this football manager business, isn't it? We've therefore qualified for the semi final of the Western Conference uh, and uh, we finished 66 points, just one ahead of our rivals, Seattle Sounders. Uh, as you can tell, uh, pretty much everybody is in disbelief as we add our name to the trophy there. From FC Dallas to Toronto, the New York Red Bulls, Los Angeles FC, and then ourselves. Uh, they're just added on right at the bottom. Uh, Josh Wolf getting involved, uh, feel free. And the board are ecstatic, as well they should be. Uh, considering that we put this team together right at the start of the season and we've suffered some horrendous injuries. Dom Dwyer, especially our top striker with 20 goals, currently uh, not available. So that's certainly something uh, to uh, be proud of. Francisco Molinero, uh, one of our new signings actually, replacing Ashley Williams uh, in defence, uh, has been uh, speaking to the press, always uh, worthy of, uh, of that. And then we've got general allocation money uh, for winning the Sporters' Shield. So, fantastic. We've got Aleshe with his uh, man of the match. Now, we'll either play Portland or LAFC in the semi-final, which is going to be a home tie. Uh, Davey Arnu there, yeah, uh, sent out to uh, do the business for me. And, of course, training. So, the schedule in terms of MLS, we've got to wait for Portland to finish LAFC, uh, to play LAFC. Then we've got Sporting Kansas taking on Houston. Seattle play the San Jose Earthquakes. In actual fact, can we have a quick look at the uh, table itself? Let's see if we can figure out how to do this. So here we are. Down in the east, it was Orlando. Uh, champions there with two points ahead of Columbus Crew. So following up their good season uh, the previous year. I think it's difficult to tell with MLS because it starts at a different place in Football Manager. Atlanta United, as they have in real life, uh, struggling there, didn't make the cut. Surprised to see the likes of the New York Red Bulls and DC United uh, right at the bottom of the pile. In fact, DC cut adrift by some 10 points into the West. And as you can see, Vancouver and Minnesota, the two teams we played uh, in the last couple of weeks of the season, both missing out, along with, surprisingly, LA Galaxy. Uh, Dallas, Colorado, Real Salt Lake and Nashville also missing out on the end of season party. Plenty to play for, then, for both conferences before we get to the finals series. In terms of the Supporters' Shield, as you can see, we were top by one point from both Seattle and Orlando City uh, in the end. A goal difference of 20, which is a little bit more modest than our rivals. But we won more games, uh, 20 to our name. And right down the bottom, as we said, 
DC United. 22 points, so just a third of our final season total. Uh, interesting to see. Uh, of course, we did not win uh, the US Cup. Uh, we will just uh, have a quick look, and it was San Jose uh, taking that from the Chicago Fire uh, back in August. So they've uh, got silverware themselves, uh, as have we now, and we push on to the MLS Cup. Uh, over the weekend, I'm going to play all the remaining games, and we're going to find out who is the MLS Cup champion for 2021. Whether it's us or somebody else, it will be uh, reported on going to take a very short break and then we will play our first fixture in just a moment stick with us and here we are for the MLS Western Conference semi-final it is Austin FC taking on LA FC as they overcame Portland Timbers by a score of three goals to two with a goal by Augusto Cesar deep into added time securing that triumph it's going to be a tough one this because they've got some very good players Carlos Vela, Latif Blessing and Diego Rossi particular to look out for at the back the likes of Mark Anthony Kay really good player as well and Kenneth Vermeer in goal uh, certainly somebody to be concerned with in terms of ourselves Dom Dwyer still out so Andre Lima deputises uh, following his first goal in several games uh, in that win over Vancouver Whitecaps. We do have plenty of options on the bench including Hector Jimenez, Chris Wondolowski, Valalba Paredes who's only just back from injury and of course hat-trick man Ben Feely uh, as he scored those three goals against the Minnesota United. Let's head over into the dressing room. The advice from our assistant Davy Arnu is that if we carry on say where we finished last time out, we've got a great chance. I'm not so sure about that one, especially because LAFC are in a good run of form, unbeaten in their last seven, and they defeated ourselves the last time the two sides met. So I'm going to go for pumping the fists, and we're going to avenge what happened last time. There we have some players motivated, including the important Cecilio Dominguez. Also for Ty Aleshe, who did so well in that previous game at the Vancouver Whitecaps. Into the tunnel we go, as always, a few questions beforehand. Uh, there seems to be uh, no end of this uh, during the MLS season. They seem to be absolutely obsessed, not only with me, but how I feel about other teams i couldn't care less right now about orlando city uh, but i do think that jonathan klinsman is going to be an important player for us his 36th appearance of the season uh, having conceded 38 goals which isn't too bad probably uh, but we're going to get underway here at the austin fc stadium uh, the usual formation for ourselves uh, 4 3 3 effectively with Serginho on the right, Andre Lima up front following that goal at the Whitecaps. Uh, for LAFC, same formation, so we are sort of matching up, uh, but they do have the likes of Bradley Wright Phillips in reserve on the bench, and that uh, is certainly something uh, to be concerned about. There is a bit of news uh, to tell you uh, as the uh, the game gets underway here, and that's that I've been offered a new three-year contract. So, uh, big news coming out of Austin. Uh, it's been signed. It's all been sealed. I have indeed signed to Ting, uh, and will be staying, whether of course that translates into anything, as uh, Football Manager 2022 is on the horizon. Probably not, but... Uh, it's certainly a show of faith from the owners following that Supporters Shield triumph. A uh, bit of a slow start here. We have gone cautious uh, in the early going uh, for our mentality, just uh, to see out the initial uh, onslaught from LAFC. Serginio picking up a yellow card as we now go positive. Uh, Adelan is being closed down uh, thanks to Davy R. News advice. And we are sans highlight. 
absolutely nothing going on here as Aleshe also goes into the book. Bit of a boring game. It has been a bit of an up and down season. The highs have been really high and the lows have been quite low. Uh, we have been defeated on several occasions. I mean, it just goes to show really when you're only winning the league by one or two points. It's been tight and it's been tense uh, throughout the season as Romney uh, with the throwing, Dave Romney, going back from injury himself. Uh, Cecilio Dominguez now, crucial to our success. But the ball from Laurentovic cut out uh, by uh, LAFC. Big ball downfield. Romney scoops that one up. Again, Laurentovic with an opportunity. This time, Serginio can cut inside. But uh, the path to goal blocked now. As it looks like LAFC are on the counter-attack. Diego Rossi, one of those danger men. Uh, he fires over narrowly uh, from a pretty good angle there that he made for himself. Uh, a bit of a lack of movement from LAFC. Uh, and that meant he had to pretty much go uh, all alone. As uh, there's a push in the box. Moreno seems to be the guilty party. As the referee going over to the VAR. Is this going to be a spot kick for the visitors? What's the sign? He has given a penalty. Oh, that is absolutely shocking, referee. Blackman pushed by Moreno. Anybody see anything? No. Uh, Carlos Vela slots home the penalty. Dispatches with a plum. Good kick from uh, the former Arsenal man there. Just out of reach for Jonathan Klinsman. Uh, he'll be disappointed with that having got so close. Uh, and LAFC now uh, going a little bit more attacking in the last few minutes. And that is really what's brought them the goal. Uh, as Kate goes into the book with a yellow ticket. Lima again with an effort but nowhere near the goal. I think we're going to have to change things up here at half time. XG noticeably lower and absolutely that they penalty awarded. A uh, bit of a disappointing one. Nothing to lose today. Go out there and give it your best shot. Yeah, nothing. Nothing happening there from uh, Davy Arnoux. Not really uh, what we needed at that juncture. I think, start with it in the second half, we're going to have to go attacking. Let's encourage the boys and uh, hope that we can turn this around uh, against what is a really good uh, opposing team here. Lorentovic going through but he is cut off. Molinaro inside up to Serginio. Can he do anything? Low cross cleared but it's going to come back to him and it's a goal. Was he onside? Was he off? What's going on? Did he stray offside? The referee's considering the situation. It's asking, oh, VAR's come back to bite us again for the second time this game. VAR going against Austin FC. Big club bias, this. Absolutely plain uh, as the nose on referee's face as the ball goes in. Diego Rossi with his 20th of the season. Jonathan Klinsman, who's been a standout for us this year. Mistake from him. Should have caught the ball there, but didn't. Harvey involved, and it's Diego Rossi who has put LAFC two goals to the good. And now they've got another opportunity. Vela with another free kick wide. This time, Klinsman getting on the ball. Big kick upfield from him needed. That's the one. Dispatched over the top, and Lima's gone through. He can't miss here, can he? He certainly can't. His fourth of the season, and all of a sudden, Austin back in the game. Vermeer came right out of his box. Couldn't do anything with it. His touch let him down there. Look at this. Lima in. And I swear he was going to miss that if he wasn't any closer. Pounced on the rebound. And that is a goal to Austin FC. Now is the time to make a few changes. And in fact, it's Lima that's going to come off. Because I think Ben Feely certainly deserves uh, a run out following his hat-trick uh, in the last few games. Junior Moreno yeah, gave away that penalty. Absolutely not doing anything for us. On comes the experience of Wondolowski. Not his best position, but I'd rather have him in there 
uh, see if we can turn this around now and again we're just going to uh, encourage the boys because we've got just over half an hour to go as we may exit stage left from the MLS Cup early on uh, Parnasari a yellow card away I don't care about that come on Davey we're not interested in yellow cards we'll worry about that in the next game if we get there quite even at the moment six shots apiece two on target for ourselves three for the opposition is that going to change though because the ball is going to go there oh it's Rojas with the goal and that you sense is going to be game set and match to LAFC they are playing with a higher tempo Augusto Cesar uh, right in the uh, thick of the action once again and it's just unmarked wasn't he oh that is a disappointing effort there is that because of the change in midfield or is that Alessio's man because I sense it may have been uh, he was uh, the man over there and that has really uh, just given us a mountain to climb doesn't look like it's going to happen with 20 to go Another change on the cards. I'm going to bring on Hector Jimenez for... I mean, I really want to take off Cecilio Dominguez. But uh, I just don't think that is uh, the way to go. I think we're going to take him off for Serginio. Who hasn't really done anything other than that uh, offside goal early on. Going to give him uh, Hector Jimenez a bit of an opportunity. Formerly, of course, uh, of Columbus Crew uh, back in the day. Again, it's even eight shots apiece. Four on target, plays three. Only two to one in corners, but we've committed quite a lot of fouls compared to our opponents. But we're getting shots off, but it's just not translating into meaningful chances as we appear to be all over in terms of our MLS Cup participation. Uh, I will report on Twitter uh, at Charlie Tango FM uh, all about uh, who did eventually triumph as uh, the ball goes right the way back to Klinsman. Another big ball downfield for him. Now Dominguez gets involved. Can he find anything? He can find Ben Feely. We are back in it here again. Just with a couple of minutes to go. Dominguez. I mean, it's the defence that's let us down. Ben Feely getting right in the thick of the action. Following his substitution now. And we've just got a couple of minutes to go. We're going to throw the kitchen sink at him. But it is not enough. As it looks like LAFC have secured their passage through to the conference final. Uh, I did want to play this game as it was. I didn't want to mess about and have to, you know, go back and do it again. I don't think that's the way you should play football manager. But if that's your thing, hey, it's up to you. You've paid the money. You do what you want with the game. Me, I did want it to be realistic. And uh, the realism is that Austin FC have fallen short against the established teams. It's interesting as we've gone through the season, the points that we've picked up are really points kind of the teams around us or the teams that we expected to be around us the likes of Minnesota and the Whitecaps you know in the last uh, few games we weren't expected to beat the likes of LAFC or Columbus Crew uh, and we haven't really uh, it's sort of gone the way you'd expect but as other teams have dropped points we've continued to accumulate them uh, as we've gone through it's been a really fun season uh, with Austin FC I highly recommend if you are uh, into foreign football MLS especially and you want to get involved and start off your own team you know we can do that in Football Manager 22 with Charlotte uh, FC they will have uh, a pretty skeleton team uh, as the Football Manager uh, new game is released so there's plenty of opportunity there they'll have the likes of Riley McGree and things you know we had the likes of Dominguez from the start but all the rest we've gone out and we've signed so they are uniquely our players and if you do look at Austin FC on TV you'll not see any of these boys uh, playing for them so it has been very unique it has been your own team and that's really the key for me um, when I started all this uh, back in the beta days was just to put together a team out of nothing 
and then build them up. We did a few games uh, back in the, the stage of the beta. Uh, there was a lot going on right at the start with different drafts and uh, different sort of news items that were happening and then carried it on for the rest of the season, picked it up and then we have uh, traveled right to the end where uh, we unfortunately have come unstuck. LAFC three goals to two and we exit the MLS Cup. We do of course have the Supporter Shield to look back on, we're very proud about that uh, and it just goes to show that there's an opportunity here, you know the tactics haven't been uh, amazing, they've not been any different to what you'd see in general games, you know a 4-3-3 isn't exactly groundbreaking uh, but some of the players that have come in and done really well for us, the likes of Serginio on the right, uh, it didn't happen for him today uh, but has done pretty well, Ben Feely is a, a young player uh, and at the back, I think parnasari has been good. Dave Romney, uh, when he's been on it as well. And Fatai Aleshe, uh, really cut adrift by Columbus Crew. Uh, somebody that we've uh, rehoused. Uh, I'm not entirely convinced by the Wanderlauskiller-Rentovich partnership. I think probably, looking back, Hernan Villalba can feel hard done by that he didn't come on instead. But, uh, in general, it's been really good fun. Uh, and as it has been throughout Football Manager 21. So I did save here on YouTube... Um, it was the Mariners Massive, which was over in the A-League, which has now been rebranded and different things. Uh, we did had a great time with them, uh, working in partnership with A-League FC. And then followed that, uh, we had, well, alongside was um, my Sunday League to Legend, uh, Leyland Albion. We took them from level 10 all the way to the championship. Um, and then things sort of died out. I th it became really, really difficult. And the, the advice I do have for that one is don't do that. Start with a club in the National League North. You know, create your own club if you want. You can do it from that level and work your way up from there. I, I went too far back um, and had to endure, I think, six, six seven seasons uh, of football before even getting to the National League North. Um, and it was tough uh, every single season. So if you're going to do that, don't worry about the additional databases. Go in at National League or National League North South level and then work your way up from there. Because by the end of the cycle of the game, you'll be up in the Premiership in Europe and you'll be challenging for decent trophies. I wish I'd done that because it would have given me several more seasons uh, in order to uh, take Leyland Albion into sort of the promised land of the Champions League and things like that. Didn't happen for me, but... Having said that, I'm very proud of everything that I've achieved. I uh, just want to thank everybody uh, that's ever watched any of the videos. Absolutely uh, all credit to you if you've stuck around uh, and are still doing so. Uh, thanks, of course, to um, the databases uh, and the FM custom kits as well that we've put in, uh, which are absolutely fantastic for Leyland Albion. Amazing stuff. But that is pretty much my journey on Football Manager 2021 done. Uh, next up, you know, we've got the beta coming up for FM22. Um, I have agreed to do some writing for Dictate the Game, uh, a, a website in the coming season. It's going to be around um, the Red Bull clubs. Um, so that's something to look out for. And also got a special little additional thing uh, happening, probably in the same save um, as that. Not sure uh, what we'll do in terms of YouTube, if anything. It has been a really good experience and a really fun thing to do. I don't know if I'm going to continue that. Uh, possibly for the beta, because I believe we will be in the Canadian Premier League uh, with Halifax. Um, so that may appear on YouTube at some point. Uh, but in general terms, next year I will be back to writing about Football Manager, which is something that I really enjoy doing. So, as I said, thank you ever so much for uh, being a part of this journey at all. Uh, and I will see you in Football Manager 2022.